Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Dev, aka The Unknown Variable here, back at you with another commentary. And with Modern Warfare 3 rapidly approaching, the Call of Duty community finds themselves in the yearly hype train once again. Modern Warfare 2 is such a bad game that a lot of people seem content with receiving the bare minimum in terms of what we should get in a Call of Duty title to begin with. People at this point in time are either on two sides of the fence when it comes to the reaction to Modern Warfare 3. You either think that this game is 100% worth your $70, or you think that this game is an overpriced DLC of Modern Warfare 2. Regardless of what side of the fence you fall on, the sentiment I always see about Modern Warfare 3 is that it's not a DLC because it has campaign, zombies, and a multiplayer. While that's great in theory, however, I tend to disagree. So here's five reasons why Modern Warfare 3 is in fact a DLC. Now I'm going to start with the most obvious point that even Call of Duty bootlickers can't deny. And that's the simple fact that this game looks practically identical to Modern Warfare 2 in terms of the graphics. I mean, if I take a second here and put gameplay of both games side by side for you guys up on the screen, if you didn't know obvious details such as what weapons were in each corresponding game and or the maps, I don't think you could tell me which game was Modern Warfare 2 and which game was Modern Warfare 3. Now maybe this has something to do with the fact that the themes are identical because if you look at a game like Call of Duty Vanguard, it was extremely similar to Modern Warfare 19, yet the theme was different, so it felt different to some people, I guess? Who knows? Either way, nothing we've seen graphically from this game constitutes the $70 price tag. You know what else doesn't constitute the $70 price tag? The maps. Now hear me out. I know people are going to be like, what the hell, Dev? They remastered the entirety of the OG MW2 map pool. How could you not consider this a positive? Are you crazy? And to that I say, it's not the maps themselves that bother me. I love the OG COD games. Modern Warfare 2 and MW3 hold a special place in my heart and it's cool to see these maps with the modern visuals. However, what I don't like is having to pay for maps that I already paid for back in 2009 once again. I'm paying full price for maps in a game that were already made in 2009 and had to be ported into a new engine in 2023. No, thank you. Furthermore, do you guys remember all the rumblings back when Modern Warfare 2 released about there being a paid year 2 expansion? And a lot of people seem to forget about this leak. But in summary, it and numerous industry insiders stated that year two content would be coming to Modern Warfare 2. Included in this year two content was Modern Warfare 2 2009 maps. Would you look at that? The exact thing that was rumored to be coming to the second year of Modern Warfare 2 is now being rebranded and sold to us as a $70 full price premium release. Don't worry though, guys, because as I stated in the intro, the Call of Duty bootlickers will always find a way to defend the game somehow. And in this case, people are claiming it's not a DLC because it has a full campaign, zombies, and multiplayer. So surely the campaign for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 has to be a long, feature-packed experience that many will hail as one of the greatest Call of Duty campaigns to date, right? Bruh, bruh. Well, we got the answer to this question within the last few days with the pre-order campaign going live, and let's just say IGN gave it a 4 out of 10. IGN 10 out of 10 gave it a 4 out of 10. Their exact quote regarding the game was yeah. underbaked rehashed and cobbled together from multiplayer parts, Modern Warfare 3's single-player campaign is everything a Call of Duty story mode shouldn't be. And this speaks volumes to the actual amount of effort and or development time they put into the campaign portion of Modern Warfare 3. This also makes me wonder how the reception to the new DMZ slash Zombies hybrid mode is going to be. Will it too be a quickly hashed together subpar product just like the campaign? Only time will tell, I suppose. Campaign scores aside, however, if you're somebody who doesn't really care about the campaign and just plays the game strictly for the multiplayer side of things, you'll be disappointed to know the total number of new weapons we will be seeing for the launch of Modern Warfare 3. This brings me to my fourth point being the lack of new content in Modern Warfare 3. Now, if you've been living under a rock, you wouldn't have heard that all Modern Warfare 2 weapons carry over to Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. And in theory, this all sounds great until you realize that $70 game you just bought being Modern Warfare 3 launches with a grand total of 37 new weapons, with 77 others being the Modern Warfare 2 weapons. So in total, Modern Warfare 3 launches with 114 weapons and only 37 of them are something new. I know many will argue that Modern Warfare 2 has six seasons worth of content, and that is true. But what makes me as a consumer want to buy a game for $70 that's like 70% Modern Warfare 2 content? Especially if I was somebody who purchased Modern Warfare 2 the year prior. Perhaps I could see the price tag being worth it farther into the game's life cycle when they add DLC weapons specific to Modern Warfare 3, but at least at launch, it's not worth it if you already own Modern Warfare 2. 
Either way, this brings me to my last point and probably one of the main reasons why most people watching this right now are going to buy MW3. And that's the fact that one, the perk system was reverted back to a traditional system and two, the movement is back to being faster like it should be. And although I agree these systems and mechanics should be in the multiplayer of Call of Duty, this begs the question, why didn't Infinity Ward and Activision just bring these changes to the current release and call it a day? Well, the answer to this question is quite simple. Why patch their game with obvious problems when they can sell you a patched version for $70? A lot of people also like to draw the comparison from OG MW2 to MW3, stating that these games were also very similar at the time, similar to what is happening today with MW2 reboot to MW3 reboot. And although it's a worthwhile attempt at trying to make the current MW3 seem like less of a DLC, it quite frankly is quite flawed. OG MW3 may have been similar, but came with its own set of original maps and strike packages such as Specialist. That in itself already makes the OG MW3 a more ambitious title than the current one we see today. All in all, Modern Warfare 3 is shaping up to be a clone of the current Modern Warfare 2 with better movement and OG maps. Do I think you should spend your $70 on this game? No. I'd say that money is better spent on literally anything else. I also foresee people saying that Microsoft is going to come in and fix COD, and although that's an unlikely possibility, at this point in time, yeah. Moneybags Bobby Kodak is still running the company, and if you ask me, that's enough for me to skip Modern Warfare 3 this year. But that's just my opinion though, if you ask me, Modern Warfare 3 is an overpriced DLC. If you think otherwise or agree with me, let me know in the comment section below. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you are new, and do not forget to turn that notification bell on so you never miss when I upload a video and I catch everybody in the next one.